ShireSociety.com. The French World War I Prime Minister, Clemenceau, said that, well, he said, uh, Wilson bores me with his 14 points, why God himself has only 10. And I think the point should be well taken, that any kind of philosophy or expression of a philosophy should be short. So ideally, what we want to do with freedom and liberty thinking, we want to have a way of expressing what we believe that is only a sentence long and uh, it doesn't really have any holes in it. Most people, uh, notably Ian Freeman over at Free Talk Live, have this way of expressing what we want that really has a lot of holes in it. Like he'll say, well, it, uh, you know, uh, people should be able to do whatever they want as long as they're not hurting anybody. I mean, that, that comes pretty close to the reality of what we believe. You know, and there's also this cliche talk about believing in peace and so forth. But I like putting it this way. Obviously, I like to tell people I'm an anti-aggressionist. I'm the only person in the world that uses that term to describe myself. So it's, it's a philosophy of one. And then people say, well, what does that mean? I've got it refined down to this. What I say is, well, it means I'm against initiating force or harmful fraud against sentient beings. Or maybe I should just say, don't initiate force or fraud, harmful fraud, against sentient beings. I don't know of a way to put it that's more succinct than that without starting to have holes. Because if you look at the way Ian Freeman puts it when he says, you know, oh, people should be able to do what they want, you know, as long as they're not hurting anybody. Well, that leaves a hole because what if someone needs to be hurting somebody? You know, for instance, uh, uh, you're stopping a rapist from coming after your wife. You're going to be hurting that guy probably, or at least threatening to hurt him with a gun uh, aimed at him. Or if people talk about how that they want a consensual society, well, uh, sorry, but th there's no room for uh, tasering a guy uh, who's beating someone with a baseball bat, because uh, tasering him is not consensual. I think the best that I can come up with is to say that we want a society where people, all people, are not allowed to initiate force or harmful fraud against sentient beings. Obviously some of them will still do it, but there'd be penalties. So I, I say um, <coughs> I say harmful fraud because the fact is that some fraud probably should not be a real source of concern. For example, April Fools. You're committing an act of fraud against somebody when you trick them into thinking that their uh, their car has been stolen, <laughs> right? Right. You April fooled them maybe by moving their car to a different part of the you know uh, town or something like that. It's an act of fraud, but you're just playing a practical joke on a friend. Or by the same token, if a woman is pretending to be a man and she's pulling it off, who cares? Technically, it's an act of fraud, but there's really there's there's no penalties for something like that that would be appropriate. That person just doesn't deserve to have any harm done to them, as best I can tell. I mean, unless they're doing it in a way that, hurt, that, that puts other people at risk, like, you know, she's pretending to be a man so she can be a firefighter and she can't, but she can't, you know, carry someone out of a fire because she's too weak. I, I don't know. But you get the idea. Uh, I, I, it's just, it's, it's not too good to rule out all fraud. We're all in favor, for instance, including Christians who I know who told me about this. Uh, we're all in favor of those uh, French uh, journalists, I guess it was, who defrauded the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia out of their American kill by telling them that some Americans who were with them were Frenchmen. And they, they would have just killed them if they'd known they were Americans. Actually, I'm not sure this happened in real life. It was maybe just in the movie The Killing Fields. But anyway, uh, there's a place for force and a place for fraud, so you have to qualify what force and fraud is allowed. Later on in the sentence, I use the term sentient beings instead of humans, or you know, instead of people. And, um, <clears throat> well, I mean, again, it leaves a hole when you say it's wrong to initiate force or fraud, harmful fraud, because that leaves this wide open question of, well, what about animals? I mean, you, you, obviously we don't believe that it is wrong to initiate force against cockroaches. Hardly anyone believes that. There are a few people that think it's 
wrong doing this shit force against mice. Uh, and there's a great debate to be had there, but man, that's distracting from just trying to start you know, this starting point of getting us to treat each other humanely. Or at least to be able to define what such treatment is. Uh, you know, to, to lay it out in one sentence. Uh, another reason for using the term sentient beings, I guess instead of not putting that in there at all, uh, and then the reason for using it instead of people, is that um, uh, sooner or later humans will run into another species, uh, and if a species is sentient, it should be, a, you know, uh, qualified for all the same rights that a human has. They might be difficult to communicate with, they might be strange, they might have customs and ethics that are different from ours. But again, if you just apply this to them, hey, you're, uh, you know, you've got a space ship there, it's, uh, it's uh, orbiting Neptune, and that's really weird, and we're really freaked out and interested and kind of worried, but you don't attack it. And when it uh, uh, starts bombing your asteroid colonies or whatever, you don't use tax dollars to fight it. You disperse your people and you gorilla the thing. You find out where its homeworld is and uh, privately funded organizations take that uh, retaliatory action, assuming the species survives. Really, that's not a very likely scenario because if, if uh, humans were attacked by aliens, they would they would probably lose just because uh, aliens wouldn't bother attacking something that could beat them. They'd move on. Uh, you know, a more likely scenario is that humans will run into sentient beings that are more primitive than them. Uh, you know, in the next few star systems, you know, within 100 light years, and this could happen, you know, within the next 200 years. Uh, and a Columbus, you know, uh, Indians type situation starts to ensue. That's where it's important to deploy this principle uh, with the word sentient beings in it, not the word people. If you run into a planet that's got people, you know, you know, <laughs> aliens who are at a level of technology that mimics the, the humans at the 17th century, um, and obviously you don't spend any tax dollars getting to them, you don't spend any tax dollars helping them, you don't spend any tax dollars killing them. And if members of your race are going out there initiating force or harmful fraud against this race, then uh, you form a militia and you go out and you uh, you take those humans down, maybe. If that's what you feel like doing. Or maybe the, uh, if assuming these humans are from a free country, that free country has a voluntarily funded treasury and it uses that treasury to go after them. Anyway, uh, I guess there's one other reason why I say sentient beings is because there's this hole that it leaves. If you say it's wrong to initiate force or harmful fraud against people, then you that leaves a kind of a question mark with regard to very young children. So it, it, is it wrong to initiate force against a two-year-old to keep her from walking into the street? Well, no, obviously it's not. You initiate force, you force her to not be in the street, the busy street. Uh, that's initiating force. Um, so I use the term sentient beings. A two-year-old is not yet fully sentient. Uh, it leaves a little wiggle room in terms of uh, using benign force, initiating it um, uh, to save a two-year-old's life from herself. So anyway, that's why I think this statement is pretty airtight. I think it's as short as it can be and as airtight as it can be. If it were any shorter, it wouldn't be airtight. Uh, and if it were any more airtight, maybe it would be too long. But let me know if you see any holes in it. Oh, I guess one uh, hole in that, or perceived hole, could be, well, what happens if a person initiates force against a human who is not considered sentient? Or either they're too young to be considered sentient yet, or they are uh, brain damaged or something like that. I don't know how to plug this hole without coming up with a really long sentence, so help me. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at... Shire Society 
www.ghostbusters.com.